What's up everybody? In today's video we're going to use Keepa, we're going to use Flipmine to try to find books on Amazon or on eBay to flip back on Amazon. So if you're an Amazon FBA bookseller out there and you're finding books at the traditional places like library sales, thrift stores, garage sales, there's nothing wrong with that. But here's another way to think about potentially buying books because it's just the fact of the matter that a lot of these thrift stores have started you know, moving to selling books online because they learned how to scan books, which is not a very hard skill to do. And because they're selling books online, that gives you an opportunity to, you know, source Goodwill online, source Goodwill on Amazon or on eBay and things like that. So today we're going to look at how to use Flipmine and how to use Keepa to analyze good deals. And then hopefully we'll come across some decent books that I can show you like, hey, I would buy this book and, you know, I, I won't actually buy any of the books here, so I'll, I'll give them to you. But um, yeah, I think this would be a cool exercise to see what, what sort of books we can find. And of course, um, if you ever have any questions about this, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. It's just my name, Joji underscore Davenport, or you know, I can leave a YouTube comment. I'm generally pretty good at, uh, at you know, responding to, to comments and things like that. So let's get right into it. Let's let's get right into screen sharing. First, let's say what's up. Hey, Denise, how's it going? Good morning. Hey, Mike, how's it going? What up, man? So yeah, you can probably tell my voice is a little scraggly because it is 6.30 a.m. here on the PST or over here on the West Coast PST. So let's get right into it. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. So let's just quickly go over to Flipmine real quick because Flipmine, I think, is an awesome software. That's not perfect and also doesn't necessarily find you a ton of deals all the time, but it is something that I look at occasionally that I do find amazing deals on. I was actually just looking at my average profit per book and on eBay, using Flipmine, my average profit per book is actually $57. So actually of all my sources, it gives me the most profit per book, but also for me, it's the place that I probably find the least amount of books because there is a lot of competition. And also there's a lot of mining that you have to do, hence the flip mine sort of thing. But yeah. Hey Glenn, I try to get early to get a front row seat. Let's go, Glenn. Well, I must say you are dead center. So a uh, good job getting here early, Glenn. So let's just go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, books here. And then we'll go probably just into some keep it deals. So keep a product finder. We might even look at the track product feature to see if I got notified of anything interesting uh, over overnight while I was sleeping. And then we'll go from there. So I'm just really all I'm doing right now is a lot of uh, filtering. I'm looking to see a pretty, pretty decent differential price between the eBay price and then for lowest Amazon price, because if this date is actually true, then this should be a good deal. For example, if the eBay price this book is $76 and then for lowest 108 day average offer is $223 and that would be a killer deal. So, you know, that's what I like to do. Let's open up a whole bunch of uh, listings to see what I can find. And yeah, Maymay says, can you go back to your filters? Of course. My filters are actually really super simple. It is to look for books in use condition with an Amazon price greater than $85 with a sales rank less than $2 million. And the reason why I go as high as $2 million is just for the fact that there are a lot of books that, you know, have these market inefficiencies, the higher rank that they are. And I guess what I mean by that is I find... You know, I find books all the time that might sell 20 to 30 times a year. So that would be, you know, maybe one to three times per month that have a high sales rank, like 1.5, 2.5. And a lot of people aren't looking at them, but you know, if you get it for a good enough deal, it still makes sense to buy it. So those are just my filters. I'm looking at profit, uh, calculating it using this automatic feature. So I don't know if it tells you what the automatic is again, but I'm um, looking at that over hundred day moving average. And I'm filtering sales rank by 180 day moving average as well. So those are the filters that I use. They're actually very simple. All I'm trying to do is find books that have a lot of value. That's really all I'm trying to do. Because if I can find books that have a lot of value, then I can feel more comfortable that usually the books that I'm going to buy, they generally hold value over time. So even if I don't buy the, the most amazing deal, it's kind of hard to lose money on a book that you're, you're buying that actually holds value. Like most of the books people buy using Flipmine or that they buy on eBay, they're like less than $10, meaning that they don't really have any value. So if you make a bad buy, you kind of lose all your money. But if you buy like a $50 book or a 60 or $70 book, then that book is that price usually for a reason over a long period of time because it actually holds some value. So that's just kind of my perspective behind it. So this is interesting, this book here. Notice that we have a buy box at 95 bucks. That's always the first thing I look at is what's the buy box price. Now what I want to do is actually make sure hey, is this a reasonable buy box price? Because sometimes it is, a lot of times it isn't. And the easiest way for you to do that is just take a look at what the book has been selling for over the past year. 
And if the buy box price seems unreasonable as a customer, like imagine if you are coming to this listing to buy it, then probably the buy box doesn't make any sense. So for example, if you look at when this book had the most sales velocity, all that means is when the sales rank was dropping more often and the book was selling more frequently, that gives you a better idea of what the book is probably worth because that's when the biggest population is willing to, you know, who wants this book is willing to jump on the listing and actually buy the book. So what I'd say is that it looks like the sales rank gets pretty good right around 50 bucks. So I would say that probably the inherent value of this book is around $50. Now, just because that's the inherent value doesn't mean that there isn't a subset of that population who are willing to pay even more for it. Clearly there is because look, if you look at December 16th, someone paid $139 for this book, which is crazy. Absolutely insane. So, um, you know, let's look a little bit further back uh, in the beginning of this year. It looks like some of these sales were up to 60 bucks. So I guess what I would say is at least in the past year, I, my understanding is I could probably sell this book for between 45 to $55 pretty easily. Meaning that if I sent this in Amazon, I would bet I could sell within a month. If I list, listed this as an Amazon prime seller, right around 50 bucks. Now, what I did just a second ago is I looked at the last 4,000 days of history because this book came out in 2002. So if this book came out in 2002, I would doubt that there's probably another um, edition of this. So, and actually something I'm looking at is, is this a 32 volume set? Because it says, this is a collection of knowledge in a manageable size volume, contains 28,000 articles condensed from the flagship 32 volume. Okay, so this actually is just one book. I saw this 32 volume, it kind of scared me a little bit. I was like, oh my God, that's gonna be insane to ship that in. But the reason why I looked a little bit further back in history was just to see, does this book actually sell for $45 consistently, not just this year, but for the last two years, the last five years, especially for books that have been out for so long, 2002, there really shouldn't be much of a difference between like 2018 to 2020 or 2022, because it's already been out for a long time. And actually what's really interesting is that this book has been much less valuable in the past. And also the sales rank hasn't, hasn't really been any better. So this is, some other market play or some other like market influence that's probably causing this book to become more popular at a more expensive price which is really interesting to me so maybe if i really want to get to the bottom of it i'd probably do a little research and figure out why is this all of a sudden more popular and all is it why all of a sudden is it selling for more money now what what is actually true is that in the grand scheme of things the used offer count is much lower than it had been in the past like if we look at the used offer count in the past like year and a half it was basically as high as 14 and as low as one or two versus if you look at the previous you know 10 or 15 years it looks like um the used offer count has gotten up to about 40 and it's been as low as maybe 12 or 13. so clearly there have been just fewer sellers recently and generally that's a number one like that's something that definitely impacts the price of a book on amazon is how many people are selling it so not sure if that's the whole story the whole picture of why this is selling more frequently and why it's selling for more money but it is interesting. So what you then have to determine is, is this eBay price significantly undervalued? And my answer to that would be no, because if I just said that I think the inherent value of this book in the past year is probably right around 40 to maybe 50 bucks, then buying it for 37, while a little bit undervalued, is definitely not a great deal to pick it up. And the reason why I say it's not a great deal to pick it up is because you could have bought this book for cheaper. Like if you look back in November, or actually September and October of 2021, this book was as low as three dollars plus shipping so you you run the risk is what i'm saying you run the risk of buying a book that is actually not a great deal because there were other times that you could have bought the book for a better deal and if there were times when you could have bought this book for a better deal and you wanted to buy the book to flip it then you should have bought it then now of course no one has a magic ball and no one knows every single book that they're going to come across and it's not like they can go back in time and, and buy the book my point is that if this book has been that low in the past before what's stopping it from being that low in the future. So for me, this is a book that I would just pass on immediately because like I said, even though I do see a sell for 139, I don't really think the inherent value of this book is probably much more than 45 or 50 bucks. You know, especially since in the past 10 or 15 years, this, this book has been very cheap. So I would not buy that book at all. This is a nuclear reactor book. This also looks like a book that's probably been out for a long time. Publication year is 1991. Let's go over to Amazon nuclear reactor analysis notice that the cover art and the images are different so something you'd want to do is take a look at the isbn and also see if there's a specific print run because you can actually see this as uh printed in 1976 
and this over here says what's the publication okay so this is 1976 as well it's interesting that the cover art of this is a little bit different though see it says nuclear reactor analysis the, the color of the front uh, the color of the hardback is also a little bit different it's like a darker blue but what i would do is first well first before we even confirm this is the right book let's just see if this would be a good deal so it looks like we'd have to pay $59 and we can make an offer on this book. Let's go over here to Amazon. The buy box is $179. So if that is a good, if that buy box is reasonable, then this would be an amazing deal. Now let's come over here to the keep it chart. So first thing I'm looking at again is when do I see the most sales? That kind of gives us an idea of the inherent value of the book. I would say probably right around $80 to $90 is probably what it's worth. There, there was a short period of time. There's about a month where the book was as low as 50 and then you know, in hindsight, that would have been a good deal considering that the price jumped back up to 80 and 90 bucks. Now you can actually even see how the used buy box has changed over time. So notice that it's been as low as 126 and as high as 179. So one thing I want you to notice is that even though, um, let me get this, even though um, the, the lowest used price of this book is between, you know, is basically 80, $80 at this point in time, the used buy box is actually still significantly higher. And a lot of the times, that prime bump will be there. But when we, at least when I, I'm not saying you should do this, but when I do this, when I try to calculate whether, or when I try to analyze the deal, I'm always trying to analyze based upon the lowest use price, almost like as if I was going to be the lowest merchant offer. And that just, for me, bakes in a little bit more of, uh, you know, just it lets me be a little bit more conservative with my buys, if that makes sense. So first six months out of the year, looks like this, had some like last January textbook season, there's some sales above 150. And then in March and May, there are you know, a few sales sprinkled in at above, above 100. And now actually we're right back, uh, right back at pretty much the middle of textbook season. You can see that this little U shape is starting to happen. And actually what I wanna do is let's just look at the last textbook season last, oh, not that, let's look at the last January, right around here. So notice that textbook season last January kind of started late December. And then by mid January, which is today, like January 14th, that looks like basically the bottom. So actually you could say maybe January 20th, 20th was the bottom. That was the lowest sales rank. So basically this book probably is going to keep selling and lowest use price right now is 113 price of this on eBay is 59. One thing that I want to do is figure out why is this again, why is this book a different cover? So let's look at the ISBN ends with 638. And you can see the ASIN ends with 638. So let's go to ISBN, probably is the same. No, so the ISBN ends with 634. So what I would do maybe is just type in the ISBN of the book here to see maybe if that will give us a different different book. Let me do that, 0471. That's interesting, 0471, um, 223, 638, Let's see if that, okay, so that even doesn't, that did, doesn't even bring anything up. So what would I do? With, I'm curious, what would you all do in this scenario? You find a good deal in a book, but um, ISBN doesn't match, cover doesn't match. Usually I just, I just want to buy it because even though it probably is the same thing um, and you could probably sell it because it, the same year checks out, even though ISBN is different, um, the title's the same, the authors are the same, the edition's the same, the year publication's the same. So Maybe they're just alternate variations of what it looked like. But again, this is a book that you would send an offer on. I wouldn't pay 59 bucks for this, especially if there is an offer available. And the reason why I wouldn't pay 59 is because again, when I'm buying my books, I want to buy it usually at least like half or a third to the, to the lowest use price. So if we go off that logic and let's say, let's just say that we think the lowest use price conservatively is probably going to be around 80 bucks. I typed in an incorrect ISBN. Is that what it was? <laughs> Maybe it was. Let's go back there. Um, 0471. Can I do that? So let's go. 0471. And then we have 223. 223-638, right? 223-638. Okay, let's try. Okay, so I guess it still comes up with the same thing. Maybe because is that actually that's actually the ASIN number. Okay. So this is probably the right book. I would I would, you know, this is probably the right book. I probably would still send an offer on this book. Now it is an acceptable condition. So you can see there's definitely some cover wear to it. I guess the number one thing I would look at is, um, is there actually, 
any damage to the pages, like around any of the pages ripped or torn. It looks like, looks like even though it has a lot of cover wear, like this, I don't really like to see that at the end. Um, there's actually a little bit of writing in it, but you know, it's not in terrible condition considering that it came from what, 19, what do we say it came from 1976, I think is what we said. Yeah. So if I were to send an offer on this book, I would say, okay, well, what do I realistically think I could sell this for? I would say you know, probably I could sell this book for 90 bucks. So what would I want to be into it for this to be like a good deal? Well, you know, I would say if the, if I got this for free, the profit would be 64 bucks. So if I could be into this for like 30 bucks or maybe 35, then I think that would be a pretty good deal. Now you can send an offer here. That'd be considerably less than what this person wants. But again, there are so many deals out there. Just like the chief says that it's not like you need this book to make money. There are plenty of books out there, but I would say if you could pick this book up for about 35 bucks with free shipping, I think that'd be a good deal. The unfortunate thing is that we're right in the middle of textbook season. So by the time you actually get this from the eBay seller, probably the textbook season is going to be over. But the good news is that the book's still at least in this year sold February, March, and May. So there is a likelihood that you can still sell that book. So let's go on to the next book. This is Understanding Pharmacology. Looks like we can buy it for 35 plus 349 shipping. And let's go and take a look here at his keep chart. Okay, so this is just a wild, this is just a wild graph right here. And the reason why I say it's wild is because the used price has been very volatile. It's gone up and down. And it doesn't look like there have been many sales when the book has been priced that high. It looks like maybe there is one at 89 and then maybe another one at 117. But pretty much every other sale it looks like it's probably been less than 30 bucks. And actually most of them have been $10 or less. There were a few sales here in the beginning of the year around 30. You can actually see that I'm tracking this book for $3. And there has actually been a time where this book has got as low as $3. So I was notified. I don't think I ever bought one because generally if you buy it on Amazon, they'll tell you that you bought it there. So I didn't buy it, but I did track it. Um, so is there a seasonality to it? So it looks like there's a little bit of seasonality in July and also in January. And is that also true of this past year? Not really. Looks like there's a little bit of maybe seasonality here and in, in actually this would have been October. But generally this book kind of looks like it just sells you around. Now, buy box is $78. The question is, is that buy box reasonable? Probably not considering that most of the time you can buy it from a merchant seller like right around 10 bucks. But, you know, that's where the buy box is, is at currently. You can see how the buy box price has actually changed since November. So you can see it started at $31.99 it crept up to or this crept up to 56.99 now it's crept up to 69.96 and now it's even at 78 so one thing that i like to do is just click on these little these little purple dots here these buy box use prices and just look at the at the offers and really what you're looking for here is to see how their stock quantity changed so this is will actually tell you how many copies that they have in stock so notice that this kazan emporium they have one one book in stock and notice that they came on the listing in October. Their price fluctuated. It changed over time. And then they actually went out of stock uh, December 30th. So you have to ask yourself, why would the seller go out of stock? Usually someone goes out of stock because they sell the book. That's not the only reason, though. They could go out of stock because they pulled the listing. They decided, hey, I'm no longer going to sell this. I'm going to send it back to my warehouse. I have hit restock limits. I'm going to get rid of this. Another reason could be that maybe they were selling the book on a different marketplace and someone bought it there. Probably unlikely considering that usually Amazon is going to be the premium marketplace in terms of what you could charge for a book. My real guess as to what happened to this book is that it probably sold. Somebody probably bought it at the buy box price, which would mean that someone paid $69.96. And having sold books well above the lowest use price and having exploited the buy box, the, the, the prime bump in the past, I know that even though this doesn't logically make sense, my my bet is that this actually did happen. Notice that you know they went out of stock basically uh, December 31st. Notice when the sales rank drops, December 31st. Look at the used offer count, went from 10 to actually seven. So my bet is that that did sell, even though I think that's a completely unrealistic buy box price. And I don't think that if I were to buy this, I would assume that I would sell it for that much, but it just goes to show you that there are tons of inefficiencies and that there are people out there who do maybe not look at the lowest used prices and they just they just check out and they spend 60 more dollars than they need to. So it's just just the reality of things. OK, so this book here, 84 bucks on, on eBay, it looks like lowest used price to start at 89. The buy box is two hundred and four dollars. 
So again, the difference between this lowest use price and the buy box price, which is usually the lowest Amazon FBA seller, that's called the buy box. And exploiting the buy box, I simply just mean that you're selling the book in the buy box for significantly more money than what the lowest use price is. And um, as a business model, I can say that if you buy every book with that assumption that you're going to buy lowest merchant or lowest, um, you know, lowest MF, MF offer and then sell for the buy box price, I'm just telling you that from my experience and trying to do that it didn't really work for me consistently. I still do it, but I do it on top of already buying undervalued books. So it's not my primary business model, if that makes sense. Okay, what's really interesting about this book is look how the used offer count here went from 12 down to one. So why would the used offer count go down so quickly? It literally dropped off a cliff. My first guess would be that maybe a lot of people got restricted on this book. And because they got restricted on this book, uh, maybe only there's only one person who didn't get restricted in the book. And so that's that'd be my first guess as to why there's a massive drop off. I would doubt that somebody actually bought 10 or 11 copies of this book, but that could be possible. Um, yeah, I doubt that anyone be, would be. I mean, it's also Pearson. So that would actually be my guess that Pearson probably gated people on this. That's probably why you see this big drop off. But $84 for this book. I'm not seeing that that would be a good deal considering that for most of the year you could have bought this book for well under 100 like most of you could have bought this for as low as 28 bucks and if we go back a little bit further there's been even time in 2020 2021 where the price of the book was pretty cheap so even though there have been sales between 50 40 50 60 this is just a book that is very volatile and it would have to be probably 15 or lower for me to even consider picking that book up Chief says that offers tab is great info for confirming a likely buy box use price as we gain more keep the data over time. Exactly. What I'm really excited to see, Chief, is how that buy box price is going to, um, what this is going to look like after the first, you know, two textbook seasons this year, because it'll give you some really awesome data to see how oftentimes the buy box price in comparison to the lowest merchant, there can be mass differences in them, but also there can be no difference at all. So. Uh, I would say that what I think we will that we what I think we will see is for books that have really great sales ranks that are textbooks that are current editions. Those are books that there's probably going to be massive gaps in buy box price. And actually, something we could do is we could actually look for some of them. So let's see what would be a book that probably like let's look at a human anatomy book. And um, let me go ahead and open up a new Amazon page because that's a potential eBay deal right there. So. Let's get some human anatomy books and let's see what the buy box price looks like. So I'm trying to find a book that maybe hovers around. Let's just open these two listings up. If you don't know, these are great anatomy books. These two, a lot of time, most people are probably restricted on these, but you can still sell these books to buy back companies for probably like 80 to hundred dollars still. So they definitely hold some value. I'm, I'm also restricted on them as well, but like, look how cool this is. We see all these, buy box prices notice that generally the buy box prices is, is is above what the lowest use price is and pretty considerably like down here at the beginning literally at the end of december like you could have bought this for as low as you know mid 90s yet the buy box price was about 150 and i guarantee you that sellers are moving and you can actually see how quick they're moving because look at this this person yes well came on the listing december 25th and they came in at a price of 153 and look how fast their stock went. So that book literally sold within like two days. So clearly there's, there's people willing, you know, to, to pay more for the book when it, when they do need the book prime and for books that have greater sales ranks, which just mean that there are more people coming to the listing and looking at the listing. There's just more opportunity for the buy box to be exploited. If that makes sense. So again, here's another example. Lowest use price is 95. The buy box price is 144. Same story here. If you look at the buy box price, generally it's significantly above. It's usually like 30 to $40 above the lowest use price. And again, like, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at any of these offers. Like this person came on the listing at 165 back in late October. Then um, they actually went to, to two stock here on December 20th. And then they went to one stock right away. They sold the copy right around what? That'd be 136. And then they sold out. They sold out. So he sold both copies at 136. So clearly that was above what the lowest use price was. You know what I mean? All right, so let's see this book. 76 bucks on eBay. Let's go over to Amazon. Buy box is 224, it's probably unrealistic. 
let's look at some of the sales. So we have what three sales here at 75. Then interestingly, uh, out of stock, nobody was selling this book. So actually there was one time when the price went, somebody listed for $48 and then the, the used offer count disappeared right away. So that could be someone bought it and the sales rank just didn't register. And I actually would bet that that could have happened. But the book basically wasn't listed for a while. Then it was up to 148. Nobody bought it. Somebody did buy it at 148 about two months later. A little bit of volatility. And then probably there's a sell here about 148 would be my guess. So this book has sold for a substantial amount of money before. What I would do is go back and look at what, when, when was this book at its best? Like when was it selling most frequently? And he says, do you buy that company still pay good money after textbook season? Uh, I would say that it might pay actually, yeah, I don't, in my experience after textbook season, they usually pay right around the same as during textbook season, because if you think about it from their perspective, if they buy a book from you during textbook season, they have to receive the inventory, then they have to list it. And especially if they're going to sell a prime, there's no way they're going to get it in for the textbook season. So I would say, Denise, just check a buyback company today. And I bet you in two weeks or three weeks is probably not too much different. It might be a little bit less because... The next textbook season is going to be so far out from now, but yeah, I would say generally the generally from my experience selling books to buyback companies, their prices don't don't normally vary too much throughout the year. So this book has a much better sales rank at thirty dollars. That's because that's what Amazon was selling it for, and clearly there's a lot of people willing to buy the book for that. So I would say the reason why I said I think that this book sold here at forty. $8. That's the reason why I went out of stock. Um, even though we didn't sell, see a sales rank drop, drop is because basically this book is worth a little like right around that price. And if this book, you know, wasn't, hasn't been available for a long time and then it just jumps on the list, someone jumps on the listing at $48, I would bet that somebody who wanted this book probably bought it. And you can see there's actually four people tracking this book. So my bet here is that the, the book sold, but for some reason, keep it didn't register it. And that could be wrong, but that's just my guess. Um, now you do see that there have been times when, um, the book has sold for right around that 35, this sale probably is at the collectible offer count at 125. Notice that the collectible offer count was three and then it went to two. And you can see that the, the price went from 125 to 150. So probably whoever was listed collectible at 125 sold. And then the next collectible went to 125. So what I'm seeing with this book is that it has potential to sell upwards of 125, maybe 150, but notice that the book has been listed at that price for quite a long time. There have been very few people willing to do that. So if you were trying to sell it for that, you would probably expect to wait on it for minimum three months, maybe six months. In other words, you're probably priced a little too high. And if you want to move, you probably would need a price right around 75 because when this book was priced at 75, like it was basically priced at 75 bucks for about a month and there was three sales. So clearly, more people willing to pay a little bit more of an inflated price than retail, but not super inflated price, if that makes sense. So what I would say is, you know, World of Books USA has this basically priced pretty, pretty well. They basically have a price to move. So I think they're probably going to move it. So yeah, this, this book clearly its value is right around 25 bucks and the price jumped up to about 346. Why? No idea. No, I don't have any idea why any anyone on this listing would be asking that much money for this book. There is the only the only precedent that was set for uh, like the highest the highest that this book is sold for is about 116. So that's what the data looks like. There's no reason, no logical reason why this book should be listed at 346. And notice that nobody bought it because, like I said, there's no logical human being that's willing to pay that much money for a book when they could have just bought it a month ago for 26 bucks. Notice that the sales rank is pretty good during this time but notice that it's also not selling out so there isn't even enough demand to completely buy out the buy out the market at this price so i'd say this is probably right around what the book is worth now you can see that a logical human being came on the listing and in prices at 61 dollars as the amazon fba seller which in my opinion is still probably a little bit overvalued but probably what that person's saying is hey you know this book has been or has sold for 90 to 100 dollars a couple of times in the past and probably what they're trying to do here is they realize that, hey, there's no logical human being on this listing selling this book. So why don't I come on the listing as a logical human being and sell the book? And let's actually 
it's actually no prime offers so there, there is actually no prime offers these are just merchant fulfilled sellers and it looks like thrift books Atlanta is the one at 61 so they're they're winning it here now interesting about this book is whoever this person is they have a hundred of these in stock and it's gonna take them a long long time for them to sell this out because notice that at a price point of about 25 bucks this book may be sold 15 to 20 times and if they have a hundred stock quantity like it's gonna take them forever to sell out if they wanted to sell out they'd probably have to list it like 20 bucks and it would still probably take them at least like four or five months so yeah definitely not looking, not gonna be buying that book so let's just oh not that let's just go ahead and keep going Let's see if there's been anything else that's updated here. Anything else that looks interesting. This might be interesting, this drawing Beautiful Women book. Let's take a look at that. Let's see, we already looked at stuff down there. Okay, let's see anything else. Cooking it up, let's see. The social work book looks interesting, however, I'm gated in that, not sure if I can get ungated in that, but we'll still take a look at it. So this is $33.49. Let's see what the price is here on Amazon. You can buy it for $15. Okay, so this is actually a book that you might want to buy on, on Amazon, or there's possibility to buy this on Amazon. The reason why I say that is if you look at the Keepa chart, most of the sales that have occurred this year have been about $35. And right now, the price of this book is $14.96. Uh, this book is even sold up to $69. But it's sold here at 16, which is right around what you can buy today. A couple sales at 24, a couple sales at 35. If you look a little bit further back in the time, there's some sales around 20 to 30. So the point of me showing you this is that this is a book that if you were to compare the eBay listing to the Amazon listing, you'd rather buy this on Amazon, not on eBay. Now, now this is not an amazing deal because you'd be buying this for slightly undervalued. It also doesn't really sell very often. So I wouldn't buy this book. But I guess all I'm saying is that this is a book on Amazon that I think is a little bit undervalued. So I think somebody who wants this book is going to get a good deal on it and they're probably going to buy it pretty soon. He says, do I think there will be a large... All right, let's just go ahead and let's take a look at this. Do I think there will be a large amount of deals coming on Amazon because of the restock limits and changes in fees and storage? Vendors clearing. Yeah, 100%. I think there's going to be a lot of people who realize that they're at restock limits. And they have books that have been sitting for a long time and they're just going to try to get rid of them. And that definitely offers an opportunity if you're using the Keep a Deals page, the track product feature for you to snag up some books that are undervalued. Generally, because I'm buying books that have more value, there's probably going to be fewer opportunities for those books. There's going to be tons of opportunities for $20, $30 books that have higher sales ranks that they're, they're probably just going to try to blow out at $9.99 just to like not lose money. But... I'm looking for books that I can spend at least like 20, 25 or more on. So I'd say there's probably gonna be fewer of those available, but I do anticipate there's probably gonna be books that have higher sales ranks that maybe sell maybe 50, maybe like 10 to 30 times a year. So maybe once to three times a month. And there'll probably be a number of those to me. So yeah. So definitely uh, restock limits are, are hurting people. And uh, yeah, they're gonna be people who just don't wanna get out of it. So. Let's go back to doing some eBay, eBay uh, book flipping. So this is available for twenty three ninety two. Buy box is one thirty. Insane. Is it selling for that? We can look at the buy box use price and see if any of the their used offers have gone out of stock. But I would say you're not buying this for a great deal because you could have bought it, you know, two months ago for about half of what you can buy it for on eBay. So to me, that means that this book isn't a great deal. What's cool about this book, though, if you look at it, is that while it's, you know, between 2019 and 2022, it's priced varied quite a bit, but this actually held a lot more value back then, which makes me think that there's a newer edition and there is a newer edition. Yeah, so this book is probably over time just gonna become less relevant, but yeah, this book has, has sold for over $100 before, but again, that was in the past. It's even sold for over $100 this year, although only a few times. Most of the sales are probably between 30 to 40 bucks is from what I'm looking at. Now, what I wanna do is look at the buy box price. Notice that this seller here came on the listing. So this treasure, this CF Lacey's treasure chest, they came on the listing at 30 bucks. They didn't even sell any of their quantity. Then they came in stock with the second book. So they actually have two of these in stock. Then they jumped their price back up to hundred, which is pretty crazy. Then their stock went down to one, which means they sold a copy. Most likely they sold a copy. 
that does, just because uh, just because their their stock quantity goes down doesn't mean they sold it but it probably means in most cases that they sold it so they sold the book then they went back up to two so i'm not sure what happened here maybe someone bought it from them and then they decided they, they didn't want it anymore and then the book went back in stock so that could be one possibility another possibility is that they had a third third copy that that basically replenished the second stock on if that makes sense then you can see recently they just sold the book since the off the stock quantity went from two to one and that happened right around january 10th and if we look at january 10th you know i actually don't see a sales rank drop so keepa isn't perfect with the data it provides but i would bet that yeah probably this book did sell for 100 bucks which again is based upon recent history is probably not a super logical buy box price but again there's illogical customers so it's possible that those sold and um actually notice that when the stock quantity went down that the buy box price has gone up so january 9th probably what happened is they sold their copy they probably have two copies they probably sold their first copy at 100 and then the second copy that they have available went up to 130. so they're shooting for the moon on this chief says what percentage of your buys are ebay versus amazon say about 20 probably about 20 probably about a fourth of what i buy comes from ebay probably about 50 percent of what i buy comes from amazon and then probably about another 25 percent comes from all the other online platforms so that'd be uh, and also local pickups so like that'd be craigslist offer up facebook marketplace next door app uh, ads stuff like that that's probably my split okay so this is a book that i want to buy but it is an interesting book to say the least all right Let's go ahead and look at Book Search 2 really quickly, and then we'll go on from there. See what we got. Yeah, I love looking at strategy guides for video games because generally they tend to do well, especially if they're out of print. Those generally tend to go up in price pretty well. Uh, so we're gonna look at that. Let's look at this philosopher's book. That looks interesting. And we'll look at this Treasury of Mexican Folkways book, Story of Abortion. All right, I'm gonna do all of these a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to kind of go through these with normal speed and I'm just going to see if any of these actually are good deals. And if I do think something is a good deal, then I'll go ahead and I'll point it out and tell you why I think that. But these ones, I'm just going to go a little bit quicker on 25 bucks. Let's go over here to Amazon uh, box is 71. Okay. So this book is, you can argue maybe it's a little bit undervalued considering the used offer count right now, but actually you could have bought this book for as low as 10. So if you were, to pick it up for 25 plus shipping you're paying 30 so you're paying three times what you could have bought it for generally though i would say this book probably has value around 30 bucks like you could probably sell it for that pretty easily so this is something i'd actually track because if this book ever got to 10 bucks plus shipping you'd be all in like 15. i think that would be a good price point because if you could buy this book at 15 you could probably sell it for about 40 as a prime seller pretty easily you'd make eight dollar profit and i think that's without exploiting the prime but the prime bump you could probably even exploit the prime bump a little bit on this book, considering that it sells very well. So I, I, I bet you that that um, you could probably sell this as a buy box for $55. And there's actually factual data like this happy happy. They came on the list in November. The stock quantity went out of stock in December 16th. They were prime at 55. So someone actually did buy it for 55. So that's why I would track that book, but um, I wouldn't buy it. OK, so the eBay price of this book, there's actually two copies for 30. I just exited out. Buy box price is 30. I don't think I need to say much more than this. This book sells for less, much less than $30 throughout the past year. So obviously not a good deal. This Mexican Folkways book, 29 plus shipping. So you're about 34 all in. You can buy for as low as six. So this is actually a potential Amazon flip, not an eBay flip. And let's look at when this book was selling. There's actually some sales right around 30 to $50 here, but then there have been some sales as low as $2. There's a sale there at 17. Let's look a little bit further. And more consistently, the price of this book sell for maybe around like eight to ten dollars. So, this price currently at six bucks is probably right around what it's worth. These people are selling it for a little bit of an inflated price. So, yeah, this is not a book that I would look at. So, this is thirty-five bucks free shipping. Let's go here. Notice that you can buy it new for forty bucks. So, if you can buy it new for forty, then clearly that's going to be the ceiling for what you can ask for it. So, this person is basically only asking four dollars less than basically retail price. So of course. That's not going to be anything to make money on. 26 bucks here on eBay. Let's go over to Amazon. The used price is about it's $23. The buy box is 46. It's probably a reasonable buy box price. 
very textbook uh, heavy uh, seasonality here in August and September. And it probably, it doesn't really look like there is much, there's a little bit of seasonality in January. So January shows a little bit of a textbook season, but the price doesn't really go up as much. Notice that in August, September, the used offer count jumps, or not jumps, but it falls off really low. So this has way more demand during those two times of the year. Um, and again, you can see that here, how the used offer count, we're in the middle of textbook season, the used offer count hasn't actually gone down. And actually the used buy box price is actually going down, which is counterintuitive to what you think. Is there a new edition of this? It doesn't look like there's a new edition, but yeah, I would say maybe if you could pick this up at 20 bucks right around June or July, maybe it'd be a different, maybe it'd be a different story because again, this book sells generally most during the August textbook season. Now, the good thing is that this book is trending down in offer count, even though it goes up in the non-textbook season, it goes down during the textbook season. Generally, it's trending downward in terms of used offers. So that's a good, that's, that's, that's uh, good news. But let's go and look at Google to see if there's another edition. So acting film, what edition is this? Is it fifth edition? So when I just Googled it, it looks like I don't see a sixth edition. So this is probably the oldest edition. And one thing that we could do is look at when this book was published to see what the publishing cycle is. So this was published in 2007. So this book has been out for a long time. So what I would do is just take this same title, acting one, and then I'm going to type in Cohen and I'm going to type in fourth edition. That would have been the previous edition to see what that looks like. So look, the fourth edition came out in 2002, which is interesting that the fifth edition came out only what five years later. And, and this book has even sold three times for 30 bucks. So that's interesting that the, the old edition is still selling, but it's what's peculiar is that there hasn't been a new edition since 2007. You'd expect that this should have come out with a new edition. So yeah, interesting there. Now there also looks to be a hardcover, although it's probably a different cover art. Yeah, it's a different cover art. Actually, it is the fourth edition that we are probably just looking at. Is that true? Let's see. Come on, Keepa. All right, we don't want to know that badly. So yeah, I would say that this is a book that I want to pick up. It's what, 2679? With that said, um, my bet is if you did pick up one of these copies for 20, like 26 bucks or 27 bucks, you, you'd have to, to make money on it, you'd have to hold it until August, September. And with restock limits, I don't want to be holding this for seven months. But, you know, like I said, if this was maybe $20 right around June, July, and this is the most current edition, I bet you that this is likely to happen. The price is probably going to go up. You could probably sell 50, 60, 70, maybe even more than that. But um, I, I wouldn't buy it. And so I think a lot of times I tell you, like, you could probably make money on this. I'm still not going to buy it. And that's just because I'm very selective with what I buy, because there's just so much money. to There's so much, so many books out there to buy. And there's so many potential deals that you want to make sure that you're getting a great deal. And a lot of the deals we come across in these streams are like good deals or they're okay deals, which means that you could probably make money on them. But I don't, you know, I want to buy great deals. I want to have $50 plus profit per book kind of thing. I want to be doubling doubling my money. So I'm being very selective of what I buy. This looks very interesting to me. And the reason why this looks very interesting to me, and this is a book that I would definitely send an offer on if I can get ungated. See, I'm not eligible, but I could probably get ungated in this pretty easily. It's probably manual and gate. Is that this book is about $38. If you look over on Amazon, there's no, no point in time in the last year where you could have bought this for $38. And as a matter of fact, most of the time it's the price of this book has been 50 or higher. There've been some sales at 65, but generally this book is selling for well above what the price of this book is on eBay right now. So what this tells me is that this eBay seller actually knows what they're doing. Generally on eBay, you should be selling your book for less money than on Amazon because Amazon is a way better marketplace in terms of the number of customers that you're going to see. And what that means is if you have fewer customers going to eBay, then theoretically, you know, your price should be a little bit cheaper because eBay sellers are usually not offering the best, you know, they're not usually offering a comparable shipping uh, service nor nor customer service so Amazon is definitely a premium marketplace so this eBay seller is actually listing a book in my opinion for what they should list it for if they want it to move quickly now interesting about this book you know Amazon sold for about $33 obviously the sales rank of this book was amazing back then but for some reason July 2020 basically the price of this book just jumped up to 70 and it just you know it's kind of gone down as low as 50 but this has been very stable this book is selling. Now, I wouldn't buy it outright for $39 because my thought process here is that I would buy it for 39 I think it's 43 I would say you could sell this pretty easily for 
probably right around 55 to 60 bucks. Now, at that price, you see how it lose money, but the, there is a buy box at 72. It's not a prime seller because it's a merchant fulfilled, it's goodwill. So there's no prime offers available. My bet is that um, you could probably easily get the buy box on this book around 75, 80 bucks easily. The reason why I say that is there's actually no buy box used data here, meaning there has not been anyone since November who's been an Amazon FBA seller who's been selling this book. So you would own the market at, and if it were me, I'd probably list the book at 75 bucks. So even at 39.43, notice that even though I think I'm gonna sell it at 75 bucks, that'd be profitable in my calculation of being conservative, I'm still going to say, hey, this generally sells for right around like 55 bucks. So I'm going to say, hey, what would be a good deal if I had to sell this for 55 bucks? In my in my eyes, that would be worst case scenario. If I have to sell this for $55. So I'd say, okay, well, if we put this to zero cost price, the profit would be 35 bucks. So what would I need to be for this to be like 100% ROI? It had to be like maybe 18 bucks. So can I come back here and get this book for 18? Probably not because that's probably too far away. But maybe something I would do is just send this person a $20 offer and just see what they say. Cause if they accept my offer at 2483 and you sell for 55, you're making a $10 profit, which is pretty good. Again, I think I'm going to be able to sell this book for 75. So, um, that's what I would do. Now, again, this book is restricted for me, but I highly doubt that, um, that this would be something I'd have to submit an invoice for, or that they're not accepting applications. So I am actually going to send them an offer for 20 bucks on this book. Also, this book looks to be in great condition. Like, it actually looks like it's new. I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not gonna sell it new, but it actually looks like it's brand new. Um, so I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make them an offer. And I'm gonna say, hey, would you do 20 bucks for this? And uh, let's send. Okay, offer is not accepted. So it looks like there's a threshold that he's willing to accept for this. Probably because he understands how to read key, but that's what I would say. This seller probably knows what he's doing. And you know, you could go from there. So. What would be the max that I'd be willing to pay? I'd probably, honestly, I'd probably be willing to pay max for this book of 30 bucks. Because again, I think I'm going to be able to sell for 75, but I'm thinking worst case scenario, I sell for 55. I still make a little bit of profit, but 75 is what I think I could probably sell this book for, which again, would be exploiting the, the, the buy box. So, you know, I would say the most I'd be willing to offer is $25, but you know, he might not be willing to accept that, that either. So. Let's just keep going. Let's just see what we got. Um, 22 bucks for this all about childcare. You can pick that up on, on Amazon for basically that price. Actually for a good part of the year, uh, this book has been 40, 40 plus dollars. So right now, uh, Glenn, I'm using a software called Selleramp, which you don't need by the way. It's just, I like it for the Google Sheets integration here. And I like it for the calculator, but I want to say it's like 20 something bucks a month. So I, it gives me enough value for, for it to be worth it, but it will tell you if you're eligible to sell it here. It basically connects to your Amazon account. There's also another Chrome extension. I forget what it's called. Um, this one, uh, restricted or hazmat. I forget what this Chrome extension is called, but there's a free Chrome extension that will basically pair up with your Amazon account and it will tell you if you're restricted or not, but clearly it's struggling right now to tell us if we are or not. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. All right, so this book actually is at its cheapest price it's ever been really in the last year. I mean, that's maybe not technically true. There was a point in time when the book was as low as $11, right? So there has been a time when the book has been lower, but generally this book is pretty much at its lowest point ever. Consistently, this book was selling for 40, 40 plus, and now it's available for about 20, $22. Um, so the question is, is this a great deal? Well, current buy box price, current buy box price is right around $43. So, you know, obviously in the current market, it's not the best deal. Interesting to me is that interestingly to me, this book doesn't really see, it doesn't really look like it has much of a textbook season. It actually just kind of sells year round. So the question is like, why hasn't it been selling between November to January very much? My first guess would be that there's a new edition, but it doesn't look like there's a new edition paired with this, but this is a book that I bet you if you bought at $22, you could probably still make money on it, but it's not a good, it's not a great, it's definitely not a great deal. It's not even a good deal, but you could probably still make money on it, but uh, I'm not going to buy that book. International Business Communication, $19.95 plus $4 shipping. Let's go over here to the Amazon listing. Looks like you could pick this up for $32 in the buy box. And 
the price of this book has actually deteriorated a lot over the last year. And this is a prime example of how used offer count matters because notice how the used price and the used offer count are mirroring each other. When the used price was very high, the used offer count was really low. And as the used offer count went up, which just means as the number of sellers increased, notice that the price of this book went down. And that makes sense. There's more people trying to sell the book. Therefore, downward pressure is greater, more competition to sell the book. So the price should go down. That's basically how that works. And you can see the buy box price is just going down, down, down. Um, is there another edition of this book? doesn't look like it, but again, what we can do is click this little Google button here on SellerRamp and we can see if a newer edition comes up. So intercultural business communication. And one thing that you could do is just look at images, see if there's any stock images. So it looks like all the stock images are going to be of uh, the, the edition we're looking at, which is sixth edition. Yeah. So where did the stock images go? Yeah. So I don't see, let's see what this is. This is, is that the same seller. No, that's a, that's a different author. Okay. So yeah, I don't think there's a new edition of this book. I think this is the most current edition. So yeah, this came out in 2012. Another thing that you could do is you could just literally type this in, copy that, paste it in Amazon, and then you can just type in seventh edition. See if that comes up and it doesn't look like there is. Yeah sixth international edition. So that looks to me like the newest edition available. So would this be a good pickup? Um, you know, the used offer count is going up, which is not a good sign. The used price is going down, but we are in the middle of textbook season, which is not a good sign if the price of the book is going down during textbook season. Generally you want the price to go up during textbook season, but actually this book has sold for quite a bit of money in the past. And in the grand scheme of things, right, this book has been, very valuable. Like it's sold very consistently for $50 plus, despite the fact that it's been out since 2012, like this book has been out for 10 years and I don't see a new edition. Looks like the used offer count is starting to creep up a little bit. Like you can see that overall the trend was going down and then all of a sudden it started going back up. Um, so this is a book again, I wouldn't buy cause I don't think it's a great deal, but I wouldn't be surprised with that said, I wouldn't be surprised if the price of this book started, you know, kept going down. You set a tracker, you picked it up for 10 bucks. I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to flip it for 40 or $50 sometime during the year, because even though the used offer count is high, this book probably still is a little bit undervalued, but again, and not enough to me that it's like, all right, I want to buy that book. But uh, again, what I found is that just the more selective you are with the books that you come across, the more likely it is that the books you buy are actually great deals that are going to make you money. Because like I said, a lot of these books that I'm not buying, I actually think you could you could probably exploit the buy box or exploit textbook season and make a little bit of money, but you know I don't I'm not I I'm not willing to risk the whole business model on doing that. In other words, I want my business model to buy great deals by undervalued books, and then try to exploit the buy box price on top of that, rather than exploit the buy box or exploit textbook season as the number one source of the strategy or the number one strategy, I guess. So this is available for 67 bucks over here on Amazon. Yeah. I mean, this book has been selling for over a hundred dollars, like hundred, most of the sales have been for over 120. A lot of the sales have been for over 130 and it does look like the, the price of this book is going down over time also as the used offer count goes up. So this came out in 2019. I'm wondering this might actually have a newer edition available. Yeah. So this came out in 2019. This is the second edition. Let's Google it. See what we got. Looks like this is the newest edition available, right? Originally published 2019. And the reason why I say that is because there isn't an edition attached to this. So if you were to just Google the name of this, the newest edition of this book should populate from Google. And you can see that 29. So this currently is the newest edition. Now, something that we could do is what edition is this? This is the, this is volume two. Let's say the edition down here. This is the second edition. So what you could do is just, Maybe type in um, on Amazon. So I'm gonna come here, just copy this and go first edition. Let's see what the first edition looks like. And I misspelled edition. Let's see what that looks like. Not even popping anything up. So maybe what we do is we'll just type this in without the edition and let's just see what pops up. Only one listing. Okay, so not not easily able to find the other listing. But would this be a good deal? $67. Well, it looks like 
price of this book is starting to tank a little bit, you will, obviously there's no point in buying this on eBay because it's on Am, it's on Amazon for the same price. So if you were to buy it, you might as well just buy it on Amazon because if you have an Amazon um, Prime Store credit card, you have five percent off every purchase. So clearly there's nothing on eBay giving you five percent back. So if you used you know an Amazon credit card, you'd get five percent back. It's a better deal if they're the same price. Also, in my opinion, the customer service is way better. So I would always prioritize buying the book on Amazon over eBay if they're the same price for the fact that you get you get 5% cash back. You also um, have better customer service. And then also you're removing that copy from the Amazon marketplace, which bumps up the, the other prices, right? You're removing one used offer account. So that's why I prioritize buying it on Amazon rather than eBay if you were going to buy it. But I would say that this book probably is going to, I don't know. This book could go back up in price. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen in this book. My guess is that as the used offer count goes up, the used price of this book should go up. And because I'm not able to see the first edition, I wasn't able, easily able to find this new edition. I have no idea what the publishing cycle is. So I have no idea if the first edition came out in 2012, if it came out in 2017. But it clearly does matter because if there are new editions that are, you know, if... Because if we could look at the old edition and see what it's selling for, that would give us a good indicator of maybe what this book is going to do in the future. So um, I would say that this is just a lot of capital to invest in this book. And even what would you sell it for? Like if you bought this for about 70 bucks and you sold it for 119, like, you know, you're going to make $20 profit. That's a lot of money to risk for a 27% ROI that in my opinion is not guaranteed. So I wouldn't buy a book. Here says, you sometimes take a look at book to see if there's a better price in eBay. Yep. I do all the time because Bookfinder is an awesome tool. So I have it bookmarked up here. So it's Bookfinder. And what you could do is, you know, just like take this book here, take the ASIN, go over here to Bookfinder, type that in, and it'll show you all the new and used prices on these different marketplaces. And you can see that eBay is the cheapest at $5.95. And like this is an argument for this probably, this book's probably undervalued right now. If there's one copy at $5.95. And then all the other copies are well above that. This is probably a book that's undervalued right now on eBay. So let's take a look at it. You can pick this up for six bucks from Orion Tech LLC over here on Amazon. Lowest use price is 25. The buy box is 50. Buy box is 79. That's crazy. So look at the Keepa data here. This is interesting. This book is definitely undervalued, but you know to what extent? Most of the like a lot of these sales are right around 20 to 25. And there have been a few recorded sales upwards of 55. If you look further back in the past, this book was pretty consistently selling between 30 and $40. There is a newer edition of this book available. It came out this year in July. If you can see the bottom right, I see the keep chart there. So I don't know why the seller is selling for so cheap. This is this will definitely sell to someone who actually needs a book if it doesn't sell to someone who's just you know going to resell it. But I would say that this is a book that I would probably buy because the reason being is that even though there's this newer edition out, notice that if you want to buy this new edition, you still have to spend 150 bucks for it. Like this new edition price is not going to go down much probably anytime soon. Um, what is actually interesting about this book is that is this, this is the eighth edition is that this actually isn't the same book. This is the 21st edition. And this also says 2023 on it. So five minute pediatric console, are these the same authors? Barry Golding and Demita. Okay, so these aren't even the same authors. So I would, I don't even think this is the right. I don't even think this is paired correctly. I don't even think that that's correct. So um, yeah, we'd have to do a little bit more research, but this isn't even the correct, This that's not even the newest edition there. But yeah, five bucks on eBay. This actually, in my opinion, would be a, a pretty good deal because you buy this, your, your cost basis on this book is so low that you know, worst case scenario, you lose $5.95. That's literally like the worst case scenario. And if you just were to sell it for 25 bucks, which is what it's been selling for, you'd make a dollar profit, which obviously is not amazing. But, you know, I think you could probably, there is like factually historical data to show that it has sold for up to 50. So if you had, if you did sell for 50, I mean, you make a $22 profit, which would be awesome. But if it were me, I'd want to move this book pretty quickly. I'd buy it for $5.95. I'd probably put it in there for like $34.99. Let's say 34.99 and make like a ten dollar profit because i'd want it to move now notice that the buy box prices are really high right now 
And the question is, did it sell? So let's actually look at this. So this is the buy box use price. If we look at that, we can actually see that the person who is in stock at this buy box price uh, didn't go out of stock. So they're still listed at $79. So they haven't sold it. In other words, this sales rank drop probably was, for, well, had to be somewhere between these two values. So it's probably at $25 was probably the sell. Now let's see if any of these offers are sold, sold at $69.99. So this probably did sell because this seller here, their price was $199. They jumped down to $41, then up to $69.98. She's a greatness, great name, by the way. And then you can actually see that the stock went from one to zero, which would indicate that they probably sold out. Like I said, the reason why someone's stock would go from one to zero is most likely because they sold the book. But it could be for another reason. It could be they sold it on another marketplace. It could be that they delisted it. it could be that they got restricted and it was pulled from their, their, their inventory. It could be that they got a pricing, uh, you know, incorrect pricing error high pricing error alert from Amazon. So there's a lot of reasons it can go out of stock, but my guess is that it probably did sell. And it looks like the stock quantity went to zero on J January 9th. So if let's zoom into January 9th and let's see if we can see a sales rank drop. And this would be January 9th, so we don't see a sales rank drop. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean it didn't sell. It just means that maybe the sales rank drop is a little bit off, which Keepa definitely is not perfect. For sure but i would say that this book here i would like i would buy this book partly due to the fact that the risk of the risk reward of this book is the risk of this book is so low the reward of this book is so high because you're only buying paying 5.95 for this i think you could as a prime seller you could probably sell this book for 34.99 pretty easily and look here's more proof of that this person came on the listing november 1st 39.95 as the buy box price and a month later they sold the book stock went from one to zero so like I said, I think this is a more reasonable price. So even if I sold this at $39.95, that's a $15 profit, which is a great flip on this book. Excuse me. So what I would say is that this book should be gone pretty pretty soon. Yeah, Adam's out of stock because that's actually that's actually a good deal. Uh, let's actually see what else we got here. Blaine says, recently found a book on eBay. They want a Biblio after hearing it from you. There's a 10% member program. Better to buy it there versus eBay. Yeah, I have the Bibliophile membership as well. Uh, I think it just depends, Blaine, if there's only one copy available and the price of the book is really good on Amazon, I would just buy it on Amazon because you got to think about it from the perspective of the seller. They have the book listed on multiple marketplaces. They're going to accept the offer that was sold on the marketplace where you know they got more money for. So if let's say you came across the book and someone else came across the book and you bought it on Biblio, and then someone buys on an Amazon 10 minutes after you bought on Biblio, the sell is probably still going to come from Amazon. They're probably going to cancel your order on Biblio because they're going to net more money on Amazon. So I guess what I mean by that is if you think there's a high likelihood that someone else is going to buy the copy on Amazon, I would probably just buy the copy on Amazon because there's the time it takes for the listing software to recognize that the book sold on Amazon or sorry, on Biblio and then pull it from the Amazon marketplace. It might like there's a certain amount of time that's going to take. And obviously the seller is going to prioritize the book that sold, like they're going to prioritize the marketplace where the book sold for the most, most money and cancel the other order. So I definitely use Biblio, uh, I definitely use uh, Biblio because the Bibliophile membership pays for itself pretty quickly. 10% back, you only pay 20 bucks a year. Basically, you know, you could buy four or five books and make all your money back pretty easily. So I would say. I definitely use it in cases where maybe there's like two or three copies at a good price, but um, if it's a great deal, I would just buy it on buy it on Amazon. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and if anyone else has any questions, let me know. But that was actually that was actually a pretty good deal because that was pretty low risk, high reward there. And like this book just sold already, so this sold at seven twenty seven. So sold, but seven minutes ago while we were just sitting here. That's what I mean. This is probably a good book. Look, look at the eBay price, $69, low and for $217. Let's look at the Amazon price. Look, this is probably, yeah, this was a great deal. This is an amazing deal, actually. Notice that I'm restricted in it, but I probably can get engaged in this. But here's why I say that this is a great deal is because if you look at the Kiba chart, there are a lot of sales above 169. There's even sales as high as 298. So it's precedent of this book selling for quite a bit of money. And this book was on eBay for $69 plus $4 shipping and um it's also even signed which is crazy so i don't know what the heck this person's doing on ebay they just i don't know if they just need rent money and they want to sell it as quickly as possible but completely undervalued this book here so this was that's why it goes so fast is because this book 
is worth $170. This is what someone is willing to pay for. Yet they sold on eBay for a signed version, no less, for um, 67. Is it a different? Let's see. Is it? So is it the cover is different on Blood Rice. Let's see. Is it? It looks the same to me. Is it? I guess the so I guess the wording is different, right? This says the the text is in white and this is in red, huh? It looks like everything else about it is the same. So is there actually a paperback and a hardcover? So there's a let's see if there's but this isn't a paperback. This is a hardcover. And even that looks different. So yeah, it looks like there there must be just different versions of this book. So maybe there's different printings of the book. This came out in 2010, so it's likely that maybe they changed what it looks like. Um, if it were me, I was. I, if it were me though, maybe I still would have bought this book. I still would have bought this book. Um, 65 plus. So you would have picked this up for 70 dollars. And let's see what that would have looked like. So pick it up for 70. 175 is a buy box, which to me is a reasonable buy box price. That should sell pretty quickly. Make 68 bucks. That's a. To me, that that's a that's a good deal. So that's that's also why it's it was gone pretty much immediately. So like it was posted 715 and then it was gone. Let's see. Wait. Just put, didn't we see when it when it sold? I forget. I thought I thought it told us when it sold. Yeah, it sold here at 727. So this was available for what have they been? 12 minutes. So this was on flip mine for 12 minutes, which honestly is 10 minutes too long. That book should have been gone in two minutes, but we're, we're sitting here talking. We're sitting here talking about random, not random stuff. So we're talking about the business. So that's what I mean. With flip mine, you got to be really quick because the best deals are going to go fast. But that $5 book that someone just bought, probably was someone here who bought it. Like that was still around for a while. And that's because, you know, there are things, there's still things that slip through, but the amazing deals usually don't slip through. Amazing deals usually should go very quick. So let's take a look at this book. 33 bucks on eBay and new price on Amazon's 42. That's, you know, not much more to say than that. There was a couple of people who paid over 150 bucks for this when there's no third party new seller in stock. So these people might have tried to return their book if they looked at what the price of the book was again. But yeah, not, not a good deal. Okay. So see, is there anything else that we can see here? Is there anything else we can see? This looks interesting. So 21 to 59. Let's see if that actually looks accurate. 21. Ooh. Lowest use price is well above the eBay price, which is good news. The buy box is well above the lowest use, the, the eBay price as well. The question is, the keep a chart is going to reveal whether or not this is actually valid or whether or not this is realistic information, like whether or not this is actually a, a good selling price. So go to the keep a chart and obviously it's not. So that's what I mean. Keep it tells you everything you need to know. It tells you the story of this book over time. The story of this book is that it's basically worth 10 bucks, like five to 10 bucks is what it's worth. That's what it's selling for. Why is the price so inflated right now? You know, it went up to 130. I'm, I have no idea. There's really not much reason why this, why someone should even try to price this for more than 40 bucks because there is no precedent for this book selling for anything more than that. So someone asking 140 for this book doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, so I would say that uh, definitely, definitely not a book that you'd want to buy. So uh, let's see. Not seeing anything else that looks the best here. That looks very good. But I'm probably gonna probably gonna um, wrap up the stream here pretty quickly. So let's just go over and maybe let's just do a little bit of a little bit of Q and A. Anyone have any questions? How's textbook season going? How are the sales for people out there who have textbooks? I'm curious. It's actually not as great as I thought it would be, in my opinion. So, um, baby boy is awake. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off soon. <laughs> baby boy is awake. So that's why that's why I stream at 6:30, everybody, so that I can do this before he wakes up. And when he wakes up, it's time to be a baby. Baby boy is awake. Since Steve. <laughs> yep. All right. So I'll just hang out here for about maybe another minute or two. Any questions anyone has before we before we go? <laughs> and if not. I'm going to peace out. Hopefully everyone sells 
are going well because it is textbook season. I know that um, textbook season for me is not going as well as I would have hoped, but it's still going well. You know, it's still, it's not going bad. I mean, so I'm happy with it, but uh, yeah. Uh, Glenn says, is there a reason you have not spent a couple hundred dollars to get ungated in McGraw Hill? It's a good question. I actually am ungated in McGraw Hill. I'm just not ungated in McGraw Hill does, doesn't ungate you in everything. So I did spend about 50 bucks to get ungated in McGraw Hill. So I am ungated in part of McGraw Hill that they let you get ungated in, but there's a specific category um, of popular textbooks that are very likely to be counterfeited, Glenn, that includes not just McGraw Hill, but Pearson and Cengage. And those books, they don't accept applications for. And he says, I just packed my first order to pick up from UPS. Let's go. So did you, I'm, I'm curious, Denise, did you look, did you watch the go-to lister video at all? Because maybe that's where that comes from, but that's awesome. Yeah. $4 is awesome. Is an amazing deal. Think about that. You can get UPS to pick up your boxes. Like from my front door over here, my front door, all I have to do is take my boxes, a hundred pound of boxes right outside my front door for $4. I can have UPS pick it up, which is insane using pirate ship. I don't have to carry it down. I'm hurt my back. I don't have to spend gas money. I don't have to go drive there. Like it's crazy. And he says with several great deals from your teaching, Joe, you think you're welcome. I'm glad that you're able to, um, to get to do that. How do you pay to get ungated? So you just got to go to a website. You just go to McGraw Hill education. So if you just type in McGraw Hill education and all you have to do is find a book on their website. So I would probably go to maybe pre-K or maybe, maybe actually I think it's pre-K. So all you want to do is find a book on this website that you're, that you're gated in on Amazon. And actually you can't see what I'm doing. Let me go and do that real quick. So all you do is you go to McGraw Hill education and you just got to find a book that uh, so you can browse by discipline here. But, um, uh, I would say, try to find a, like you can hit me up behind the scenes, Denise, if you want the specific book that I bought, but generally you should look for the cheapest thing available on their website. So I'm trying to find which of these do I think would be the cheapest, probably like my guess is that probably something like humanities is going to be the cheapest. So then what you try to do is find a book. So, I mean, <laughs> to buy that, you had to spend $162. So you wouldn't want to buy that, but essentially you'd want to buy the cheapest thing available. I think what I bought was like three or four bucks per, um, three or $4 per book. So I think I ended up spending like 50 bucks. Yeah. Ooh, Blaine says had some good textbook sales, but I don't sell books at your scale. All right. Yeah. Um, are you Blaine? Are you, I know you do a lot of, I think you do a lot of eBay to Amazon flips. Cause I remember talking to you in the past and I know you went, I know that you and Steve and, and, um, Seth were part of like a program a little bit. And I think you guys did eBay to Amazon. So are you doing more books now or are you going to do more books? Denise says, go to Lister. Let's go. Uh, maybe said you buy a book for, yeah, I bought them directly from McGraw Hill and I submitted an invoice and it took me five tries to get ungated. So I bought, so I basically sent them the invoice and it took me five tries to get ungated. Some other people took the first try, second, third try, but sometimes it takes a while. Blaine says exactly only do USPS and UPS pickups. Absolutely worth hundred percent agree. Here says another way to ungate on McGraw Hill is to be on Amazon a long time and keep good feedback. Okay. Yeah. So. I personally was gated in it. The reason why I got gated in it, I used to be ungated in it. I sold McGraw Hill books from like 2016 when I was in college all the way up till 2021. And then I got gated in it because I had sold three counterfeit textbooks. I think that were McGraw Hill and I sold them unknowingly. Like at that time, I didn't even know that counterfeit books were a thing, like textbooks were a thing. I got test buyed out by a company. And so I got gated on McGraw Hill. And I think the reason why I got gated on it was because I bought because I sold factually sold counterfeit textbooks, or at least that was the claim that was made. And like I said, I wasn't uh, doing my due diligence at a time because I wasn't even aware that was the thing. So then I had to, so I got gated. So then I had to re ungate myself. Liz says she was auto ungated, which is awesome. That's cool. Rosemary says, when is the deadline to buy textbooks? I don't think there's any deadline. I think you can buy textbooks year round. When are textbooks to sell most frequently? They get sell most frequently during January in the August, September textbook season. Some books also have textbook season in May or even March, but I personally buy textbooks year round. I'm, even though we're halfway through textbook season, I haven't slowed down my buying. I'm literally buying consistently basically the whole year. And all I'm finding, all I'm trying to do is find good deals on books. And what I mean by that is 
even when I come across a book during textbook season, if the book is inflated in price, I still use the average price of the book outside of textbook season as what I think worst case scenario I'm going to sell the book for. So I don't go based off of inflated prices. I go off based off what can I sell this book for in a non textbook season setting. Maymay says, yeah. So if you're ever going to get engaged in anything, Maymay, you have to buy at least 10 units of something. So the idea is you go to McGraw Hill, you find the cheapest thing available, and then you buy 10 of that. And then you would go ahead and submit a, um, an invoice under the listing. And if anyone's interested, you can just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll tell you the book that I'll just, I'll send you the book that I bought. Ooh, Steve has a wonderful, this is a great question. Do I feel that go-to lister is better than a seller list? I think it depends on what kind of book strategy you have. I think that if you are an Amazon, if you're an online book arbitrage seller, I think right now a seller list is better. And the reason why I think it's better is because it's cheaper. It does everything you need it to do. And um, I think that right now the UI look of it, like the visual layout of it looks better. But with that said, a seller list is not probably going to be changing anytime soon. I know go-to lister and Avery and his software developer, they're changing it over time. So I would say that if you are, um, if you are somebody who just sells books and gets it from thrift stores and you're somebody who gets them locally and has really low buy costs, I would say go-to listers way faster. So it just depends on your strategy for me, because every book that I buy, I have to look back and figure out what my min and max price is going to be. Cause I'm actually spent, I'm, I'm paying up for these books. Like my average book cost is $27. I can't just let this software list it for me at whatever price it deems is, is good. So for me, I, I still have to open up the listing, do the keeper analysis and set minute max price. So for me, I would prefer to use Excel lister because it's better. But if I was somebody who is doing thrift stores, library sales, local meetups, I would hundred percent use go to lister because literally it's like boom, 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 like fastest scanning software out there. And, um, especially for new people, I would recommend probably go to lister because most new people and the new sellers have no idea how to list anything on Amazon because they don't know how to read a keep a chart and go to listers is actually going to help you price better, help you price a little bit higher on books that have better sales rank. So I just say it depends on your business model. Probably for my audience, most people I'd recommend Excel list because you're going to need to analyze keep charts. So it's also a little bit cheaper. So that, that's just my honest opinion about it. Rosemary says, thanks. Maybe it says, can you post on the, on the discord? I'll just private, how about private message me? I don't know if I necessarily want to give all that information out to people because, uh, that ungating is actually pretty valuable. Like that ungating has made me already probably like a couple thousand dollars this year. And not that I'm not forgiving all the information out, but because you're here, I want to reward you. Like I'll give it to you. But, um, so just, yeah, just send me a message on discord and I'll let you know what it is. Lane says, just looking to add 10 to 20% in other categories that don't usually sell, slowly getting into books and DVDs. Just got ungated today and mostly sell electronics and games. Cool. So Blaine, did you get ungated using uh, Christian books? I'm curious because I think Christian books is uh, is the ungate still. That's how I got ungated. By the way, if you're not ungated in DVDs, you need to get ungated in DVDs because the DVD category is insane, especially if you're doing thrifting because there's so many people restricted in DVDs that if you go to Goodwill and you go to could probably just go well but if you go to local library uh, local thrift stores they usually have a ton of sealed dvds and they're usually really cheap like even if you're just selling 15 dollars new dvds like you could you could be doing well my dad actually i taught him how to sell on amazon i taught him back in 2017 he still sells pretty and he basically sells all dvds now like he goes around to thrift stores and he just buys new dvds and i think this year i think last year he did like 75 or 80k which is pretty insane just just from that Nice says, thanks for your time and expertise. No, no worries, Nice. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Gary says, if money is an issue, you can get Scoutly Live for $10 and get Turbo Lister included. Gary, that's a great question. I should actually, um, you know, I should probably uh, do a video about Turbo Lister. I've never used Scoutly. I've actually never used Scout IQ either. So I've never used Turbo Lister. And the reason why is because I've always just done textbook flipping and I've always done online arbitrage. So I've never... Well, I have gone to thrift stores and stuff. I just felt that for me, I like the business model, spend more to have things more filtered for you. But, um, yeah, Steve says, I appreciate the feedback. Of course, man, no worries. Blaine says, yeah. So Christian, Christian books, DVD, I think is what it's called. So if you're not ungated in Christian books, DVD, 
I think it's what it is. I don't think I don't think that's the right. I don't think that's the that's the that's not the correct uh, website. There's a there's something Christian something that you can get on gated DVDs and that will definitely definitely help. Then says great info, Joji. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Maybe it says I sent you a reminder on Messenger for the book. Okay, sounds good. And the one other thing I'll say is so we just talked about Acceler Lister, Acceler List, and we talked about GoToLister. There's also Inventory Lab, which I had only used once in like 2017 and I didn't use it very long. What I want to do is actually start using Inventory Lab just to try it out and give my feedback on that listing software. Because I think they're like, it's not like one size fits all. It's like each of them is going to be, you know, have a specific purpose for somebody. So I want to try to make an Inventory Lab video of how to list on inventory and sort of the metrics it keeps track of. So I think that would be good. Christian Bug Distributor. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Liz says, hit that like button. Thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. Yeah, if you, if you like the content and you find that's valuable, number one way to help the channel out is just spread to more people. And you can do that by hitting the like button. Gary says, thanks, Joji and the group. Yeah, Gary, if anybody here in the chat wants a question to ask, answer, go to, go to Gary. And then if, uh, on the other hand, if you want to be stumped by a question, then ask Gary to ask you a question that, and you won't be able to answer it most of the time. So for those who don't know Gary, uh, he always asks me questions, very insightful questions that most of the time I can say, I don't, I don't know the answer to that, Gary, I'm sorry. So that's cool. Um, how are sales, I'm curious, how are sales looking like for everybody? I know it, like it's textbook season. I'm sure that if you're here, you probably do a lot of books. So what is textbook season looking like for you? Have you seen any slowdown in sales? Generally what I found during the textbook season is, especially on weekends, those tend to be slower because that's when students are obviously just chilling. They're going frat parties. They're probably not doing much schoolwork, if you know what I'm saying. So like for for me today, like I haven't even sold, you haven't even sold anything today, which is crazy. It's, I mean, it's only 7.52 AM, but it's also a Saturday, so. Gary says, uh, ha, 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 ha. Thanks, Gary. Good to know. Yeah. Ooh, maybe it says sold one for 175. Do you know what you picked it up for and where you got it? That's, that's awesome. 175, um, 175. I'm trying to think if there are any wins that I had recently, uh, with any of the books. There have been, there definitely have been some crazy books that I've sold that I'm going to be making some videos some videos coming out soon of some books that I sold that were pretty insane in terms of like what they flipped for. So I'm excited for that to come out. I'm going to be coming out with a video of one book in particular that I picked up for 92 cents plus shipping and sold it for 150, which was crazy. But I bought it on Amazon. I bought an Amazon for 92 cents plus like $6 shipping and sold it for 150 because I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in the video, but that was actually a pretty cool pickup. They made picked it up for 30. Where did you pick it up? That's crazy. You picked it up for 30 and sold for 175. That's insane margin. Steve so says you have a huge and loyal fan base and we appreciate much love. I appreciate you, Steve. That's awesome. That's super, super kind of you. Glad that I'm glad that everyone's here and that you're you're willing to come come along so early in the morning. And uh, I love to see so many people here. 10, 12, 13 people. Yeah, I know, Blaine, right? 92 cents. What was crazy about it, Blaine, is it was 92 cents prime offer. So if I use my prime shipping account or if I use the prime service, I could have bought it for 92 cents and then I ended up flipping it for one, one forty nine ninety nine. So it's pretty crazy. Uh, wow. Maybe got it from eBay. Maybe did you exploit, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you exploited textbook season, which is good. You should exploit textbook season. Um, but when you bought it, maybe what was kind of like the lowest used price over time, like consistently, I'm assuming if you paid 30 bucks for it, it was probably like it was selling for between at least like probably at least 60 bucks on the low end is what I would guess. Right. And then you probably exploited the textbook season, which is, I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't exploit textbook season. You should absolutely exploit textbook season. I'm just saying that don't use that as the number one reason why you'd buy a book because often, yeah, that doesn't work like that. So I think May May says, yeah, so maybe about 60 or 70. Yeah. That's what I would think there. So very cool. Um, Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you all the book that I just sold recently. That was actually. I'm sure some of you know who this is. I actually don't know who this is, so you all can tell me if you know who this is. But I only know who this is because I've sold this person's book like four or five times now. 
pictures by uh, Jeff Bridges. So this is uh, this book right here. The first time I came across it, you can see I bought it three times on Amazon and I've sold it all three times. But when I came across this book, the first time I was actually at a thrift store, I was going grocery shopping. It's crazy. I was, there's a thrift store right by where I grocery shop and I just popped in real quick. And this was just sitting on the table and I scanned it. And at the time I scanned it, it was like, I want to say maybe like 150 bucks or something. So I sold it for 150. And is this an actor? Jeff Bridges? I don't think he's an actor. I think he's a photographer, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Jeff Bridges. But anyways, that was the first exposure I had to this book. I got it at a thrift store for five bucks, flipped it for like 150. And I was like, all right, cool. I just paid for groceries for the next like week and a half. And since then, I've actually bought it you know, three times. And again, this is why I'm telling you should track books. I bought three copies right here, right when the price of this book hit my tracker. I was tracking it for 65 bucks. It went down to 43 and then I ended up buying three copies. And I sold, I just sold a copy for 276, which was crazy. So I just sold one yesterday. So I didn't expect to sell for that much. The other two sold for like 160, 170, but um, that was also a win. The actor, I, I don't know if he's an actor. I think he's a... I think he's a photographer. Someone else can let me know. I don't know. Like I said, most of the books I come across don't know what what they're about. Like, but unless I unless it's necessary, unless I need to do a little more research about the book. But generally, uh, the only research I do about a book is what it sold for, when it sold, how much it sold for, the max price it sells for, the least that's ever been, whether or not I can track it. I just read Keepa. Look at my man, Gary, my man, Gary coming through. Jeff Bridges is an actor and son of Lloyd Bridges, another actor. Okay. So he is an actor. See, that's what I mean. I have no idea. L Lloyd Bridges. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. All right, everybody. I think I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm going to end the stream now. I appreciate you being here, hanging out. If you're not already in the discord group, it's free and here it is right here. There's a lot of people in there who are knowledgeable, who answer questions. There's a couple in particular who are probably much more knowledgeable than I am because when I look at their answers to questions, I'm like, wow, I don't even know if I knew that sometimes. So it's a really cool, cool community I'm trying to build that community up so that, you know, we can, we can just, uh, <laughs> Gary says, start in the big Lebowski. I don't even know what that is, Gary. Oh my gosh. Should I know what that is? I probably should know what that is, but uh, I don't know what that is. So that's all I got for you, everybody. Have a good one. Have a great Saturday. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs> Rosemary says, great movie. Okay. The Big Lebowski. All right. See you later, everybody.